a background and what motivated you to even, in a sense, your your history of why you got in this position to be able to even make this a motivation for others. So if you will, go ahead and give your background no, before we introduce it to Michael. No doubt. It's always tricky when people ask me about my background because I feel like I could, you know, I, <laughs> I could start anywhere and say a whole lot. Everybody likes to talk about themselves. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to tell you where I currently stand and what I'm currently doing and how that plays out. So I'm currently a financial executive and, uh, and I'm a vice president with a Fortune 200 firm. Uh, it's a wealth management and financial planning firm. And I lead a business unit in Southern California of 300 financial advisors and entrepreneurs. Uh, and we're managing $20 billion in assets under management. I also own the clothing brand that I just discussed and the Supremium Streetwear brand, as I stated, for modern, modern entrepreneurs, uh, for business leaders, high achievers, and it's called the Money Motivation Brand. Um, in terms of, of financially, I am in the top 1% of income earners in the United States. I do invest in the stock market. I have investments in the stock market in addition to owning a business. Uh, I live in a million-dollar home in Los Angeles, and uh, and I love what I do. Uh, definitely excited about this podcast. All the guests who are going to be on it, we're going to promote it. We're going to make it great. So I'm uh, looking forward to it, Montoya. Hey, absolutely, man. We put together a squad for this Money Motivation Podcast, and as I said, we will run each one as a game. So let's introduce another heavy hitter, Michael Suller. Thank you for being with us. Appreciate you, if you will. You're no slouch yourself when it comes to these finances. So if you will, tell people about your background as we get started with this game. Go ahead, brother. Montoya, Mark, it's a pleasure to be on, especially for this zeroth episode. Uh, I think uh, being on for the very first episode, very like I said, zeroth episode is, is right up my alley because if you want to know where I started, I'm really a, a country kid, a country boy from nowhere, you know, literally nowhere. In Mississippi, and you know, we all have a similar alma mater. But what brought me to finance was actually engineering. I worked for a long time developing missiles and things that go boom in the night uh, against our enemies, both foreign and domestic. But I was really bored at that. And I had another brother that I would love to bring on this show at some time in the future that introduced me to the world of uh, Forex, foreign exchange. Uh, you'll hear a lot about foreign exchange, you know. On the internet, I think a lot of the millennial crowd has caught on to it, just like we did way back when, when I first started trading back in 2005. But it really caught with me. I had no knowledge of the financial world, but the math background, the science and engineering and analysis background kind of melded with me. And it was a natural fit for uh, financial markets, especially the, fa the fast moving dynamic markets like you could say equity stock markets, but really the derivative world is what calls me. And I started trading with just, you know, pocket change and ended up making enough in my first year, strangely enough, really bad risk management, but that's a whole nother story, to buy my wife an engagement ring from Tiffany. Um, she wasn't my wife at the time, but I, she, she agreed. So uh, long story short, what basically ended up happening, I, I, one of my, I guess you say the nexus of my next career was I was making a little money on the side while being an engineer full time, whatever that is. And the financial crash of 2008 happened, and I happened to be lucky enough, um, slight skill, but mostly luck, on the right side of that. I was short most of the equities market, long the dollar, um, and it was a really come up and you know well come up point for me, uh, at, and it really changed my narrative as to what I wanted to be, and trading itself changed my life, not just from that point, but it was all the mindset. Instead of thinking of a steady, salaried, you know, non-growth mindset, I quickly changed and adapted into a growth mindset and really came into who I was, which was really a big tinkerer. I always played with things. And so I took the engineering background and the science of it all and processes to make my trading better, to better manage that risk. Because I wanted, as a personality type, I found out that I like to be exposed to risk because risk you know, one side means danger, on the other side it means opportunity. And so in doing that, we decided to write up algorithms, which is popular now, but at the time there were only, you know, Wall Street firms with lots of resources that could do it. But given the training and background and skill set, it wasn't that big of a reach for us. It was just a matter of time and allocation of resources. We developed a couple hundred thousand lines of code, uh, got registered, 
as a commodity trading advisor in 2010, started managing money for clients. First of all, was accredited investors only, um, $100,000 minimum investments and up. But now we have a program for not only that crowd, but also a crowd that speaks more to, you know, who I, who I am, who I was, and just an aspiring, you know, professional who had a skill set and had ambition and wanted to be more in life. And so we have a smaller fund for those as well. And we also are ex- extending some other financial products this year, uh, some internship programs for kids in the local schools here, HBCU here uh, locally in Huntsville, Alabama. And we've extended our codes to probably in the millions of